Hello, I'm Gunnar Dahlstrom and this is my tradebook screencast. So in order to choose my tradebook, I actually use my uh, handy dandy iPhone to Google tradebooks for social studies and what I found was a list compiled by the National Council for the Social Studies um, which had to do with uh, tradebooks they felt would be great to incorporate in the classroom. They separated by year this so I looked at the newest list which was preview for 2019 so I don't think that's the full list but they have uh, quite a bit anyways. And so I scrolled down to the 9th through 12th level and I found this one that piqued my interest. It was called Brazen Rebel Ladies Who Rock the World by Penelope Bagu. I believe how you pronounce your last name. Um, but either way, so this book is quite literally about rebel ladies who rock the world. It's a collection of 30 stories and they're told, well the genre is non-fiction graphic comic. Or graphic novel, sorry, and non-fiction comic. Which I you know, to be completely honest, I never knew uh, non-fiction graphic novels and comics ever existed because I've only ever read the comics and graphic novels that are like, purely fiction about superheroes or sci-fi, etc. And so I was very excited when I opened up this book because I had no idea. I wanted to read the stories, but I didn't know it was going to be like this. And so it'd be very hard to give a summary of the whole book because there are 30 individual stories, but essentially what it does is each story t talks about a woman who was important in society most definitely in their part of the world and to the world at large for those who knew her uh, for those who knew them excuse me talking about multiple women but their stories are largely forgotten by the historical narrative and that's made clear when I opened up the book and just about the first um, I would say eight out of the first ten stories I would never heard of the women spoken of before but they left their mark on history. And so we go to the first one. So it's interesting the way they kind of juxtapose this. The first one is a story about uh, Clementine, the bearded woman of France, who became famous and a celebrity for the fact that she was confident that she could wear a beard. She grew it out and lived out her days uh, as a celebrity. People wanted to know her. She was uh, an inspiration to the hairy men of World War I, as it's discussed over here. Uh, dignitaries wanted to visit her, people would buy her pictures and ask for autographs, uh, people would always offer her massive amounts of money to be kind of uh, in their carnivals or circus, which she always denied because she didn't want to be a sideshow, right? She was confident in herself and wanted to own her business, and that's what she did. That's what she did, even though she met a husband who was at first kind of running the business, you know, still subscribing to traditional gender roles, um, he suffered from, I believe it said, room Rheumatitis, I believe. Let's see. I want to get this right for the sake of... Rheumatism, excuse me. Rheumatism. So she took over the business. He did the books and she ran the business. She ran the ins and outs of us, took care of security in her bearded lady cafe. And uh, in her glory years, she went right back to the same thing until she passed away. She passed away a celebrity uh, for the fact that she wore a beard. Right after this story, we move on to the story of Nzinga, Queen of Ndango and Matamba, who was a warrior queen who, it is implied, killed her family, or members of her family, who made her enemies of the throne in order to take power, fought against Portuguese oppression, um, cut deals with the Dutch in order to fight against the Portuguese, and she would lead her people into battle for about 40 years until she died at the age of 80 finally brokering a peace agreement between her uh, her people and the Portuguese. And it's a fantastic story. So that's what these stories do. They kind of juxtapose uh, very different stories because right after that, we move on to Margaret Hamilton, who was the actress behind the makeup uh, for The Wicked Witch and The Wizard of Oz. And so this book goes from time period to time period. I would love to summarize all 30 stories, but I uh, can't do that for the sake of time. But that's what these stories do. And they cover um, from, uh, like, the story of the warrior queen from about the 1500s all the way up to uh, Mae Jemison's story as a female African-American astronaut who is still alive today, right? Her history is very recent, her impact on society. And so the, th the thing about the time periods that it jumps from, you can use this book for any unit you want. You can use it as supplemental material. However, um, I think that's a waste. I would honestly frame... Um, a book report assignment um, around this book so the students, enough students could choose it, read it, enjoy it. 
and really get the most out of it by reading these stories and learning about these inspirational women whose stories have been largely ignored um, in favor of the traditional, you know, Eurocentric, male-dominated narrative that we teach and ram down the throats of our students, unfortunately. So I would use this entire book as a graphic novel. And I don't really see how you can promote too much um, kind of literacy strategies in this. There's really not opportunities for kind of a close read because of the simplistic nature in which it is written. Uh, however, I think this is a fantastic way to get students more interested in reading than if they would pick up a novel that is, you know, in the classic sense, lots of words, lots of information. Even if it's entertaining, this kind of graphic novel element really sets that bar high for books that can tell important stories while also being very entertaining and uh, relatable to young readers. So I would most definitely do this. And it also, I mean, this can span any brand of social science, right? It can be used in world history. It can be used in geography because we talk a lot about human geography at the high school level. If the high school has a class, uh, U.S. history, political science, I'm sure it can even be used in economics somehow. Um, this is applicable to all the social sciences, so take your pick as supplemental material or as just a book because I think it will also encourage students to become more interested in maybe alternative narratives in history um, and maybe they'll seek out to become historians or seek out more stories um, about women or about just people in general um, who are largely ignored in favor of that traditional narrative. So it's fantastic. So if you can't already tell, um, I would most definitely recommend this to my colleagues. Um, I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed this book. Um, I think, I'm sure the graphic novel concept has something to do with it, but it's also just the way that the stories of these women is told. I'm very much a believer in women's empowerment. I am, while I do have a lot to learn still, I proudly label myself as a feminist. I grew up around strong women. And one thing when I was growing up, um, it had to be pointed out to me, but it became painfully obvious, I can never unsee it, that women's history is very much put off to the sidelines in favor of the Eurocentric kind of male-dominated view. Sure, we might get some Catherine the Greats thrown in there, or some uh, Queen Elizabeths and Queen Marys, but at the end of the day, those are only a few examples versus all of the influential men that we talk about. So this kind of book um, opens up so many avenues, not just for me, but can open up so many avenues for um, historians and history teachers, social study teachers alike, to kind of develop units and develop lessons around learning about these unsung heroes, learning about these stories that are important, right? Even the bearded lady, that might just be seen as an entertaining story. That's important because that was not the norm at the time. Right? People wanted to treat her like a sideshow. Instead, she made it clear that she wanted to live her life as a bearded woman and celebrate it because that's who she was. She was unashamed of it. And that was fantastic. That went against the norms of society, especially in France during that time. Right? And then, of course, talking about the sisters who married the socialist leaders who went against Al Hefe. Right? And so it's absolutely, it's a fantastic read. The connections between social science and the stories are undeniable. And I think it's a valuable book, not just for my social studies colleagues, but for all of my future educator uh, peers to have in their classroom. I think their students will like it. I think if the right students read it, they might be encouraged to kind of take up the fight for um, telling the stories of those who are largely forgotten or purposely pushed off to the sidelines of history. Um, it's a fantastic book. I cannot recommend it enough. Thank you very much.